All right, let's take a look at problem number five. This is actually one of my favorite stories, math stories, um, about Carl Gauss's lazy teacher who wanted to keep his students out of his hair by assigning them a very dull task of adding all the numbers from one to 100. Um, and of course, Gauss was way too smart to fall for that. He immediately knew what the answer was by using clever math. However, if he were a student now, he'd probably just write a Python script to do it. So the task here is basically to um, add all the numbers from one to 100. And um, we, the suggestion is that we could use the range object to generate all the numbers. And then it also suggests that we should um, use the input function to ask the person what, how far they want to add up because we don't necessarily, I mean, if we're gonna make the script, there's no reason why it should always add up to the numbers to 100. So let's go ahead here and just make a new cell. Um, so I think let's build this up one step at a time. So the first question is how can we add up all the numbers or, or how can we generate all the numbers from one to 100? So that's gonna be a range. So let's say, for number in range. And the range we want to go from one to 100, but you might remember that we always have to go one past the number that we actually want. Um, so this is a for loop, so let's not forget to put our colon. This, uh, Jupyter Notebook's really smart. It knows that I need to indent the code block. So let's just have it print the numbers and see if that works. Okay, so far so good. There's the numbers from one to 100. That was pretty easy. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add all the numbers from one to 100. So, um, we have seen little tricks so far that involve uh, basically adding onto things with loops. We saw that you could take an empty string and tack other strings on to the end of it, uh, concatenate a bunch of them to generate a longer string. We also saw that we could start with an empty list and add items to the list one at a time to build up a list. But we can essentially use the same kind of strategy here by starting off with, if you wanna call it an empty number, um, which would be zero. So let's create a number, uh, a variable called sum and set it equal to zero. And then what we wanna do is instead of print the number each time, what we really wanna do is take the number uh, and then add one to it and put it back into the number. So that's what this, um, sorry, we need to take the sum and add the number to it. Okay, so whatever the sum was before, we'll add in the number and then we'll put it back into the sum again. And then all we have to do is, now do we want it to print the sum every time it goes through the loop or do we want to print the sum at the end? Let's say print sum and see what happens. Okay, well, if we wanted to do this and print the sum with every single number, uh, then we should not, uh, then we should indent that. But what we really want is for it to just print it at the end. So I'm gonna get rid of the indent. That means it'll do all the summing first and then print the answer. So let's try that. Okay, that's much better, a lot cleaner. Um, now there's, an, uh, we saw that uh, we could use this sort of increment notation where instead of saying sum equals sum plus a number, we can just say, plus equals, and that's a shortcut to say, take what's in sum, add number to it, and then put it back into sum again. So if we do that, we get the same answer and the code's a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now the question is, we don't want to always 
have it work for 101, we want the user to be able to input the number that they want. So let's add an input statement. Now let's create a variable and call it how high input um, how high should I add? I'll leave a little extra space in there because that'll make a space between where I type and the prompt. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and try this just to make sure that it works. Okay, how high should I add? 100, okay, so it prints out 100. Now there's gonna be a problem here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this. There's actually gonna be two problems. One problem is that if they put in 100, we don't actually want 100 to be in here, we want it to be 101. So what I need to do is say how high one. So if they type in 100, the range is going to go from 1 to 101. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what the problem is. So I say 100. Okay, I get an error. And the problem is that it thinks that I want to take a string and concatenate a number to it, but that's not what I want to do. I want to take a number and add one to it. And as you may recall, the input function always returns a string, that's what the person typed in. So if we want to turn it into a number, we have to, um, we could do it in two steps. We could say how high the string, and then say, uh, I equals, integer of how high string. So we take the, what they typed in the string and turn it into an integer number and that will work. So let's try that. How high? 100. Okay, it worked and it didn't complain this time. We don't actually need to print the number that we typed in. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. The other thing is if we want to make our com code a little more compact, we could just nest this um, input statement inside the int statement, and that would uh, get us out of the business of having to define an additional variable. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, the code's a little less clear cut, but it's also more compact. So it's first gonna prompt the person, then take their input, then turn it into an integer, and that's where how high is gonna come from. So let's try that, 100. Now that we've generalized the program, we can actually, uh, let's see, actually we should probably say what this is. So let's go ahead and say, um, your numbers add up. Sum. All right, let's try that. 100, the numbers add up. Okay, now the cool thing is that Python's really fast and also really um, patient. So there's no reason why I couldn't say, um, add up all the numbers to a thousand. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, what if we say, uh, add up all the numbers to one million? Whew, it was still pretty fast. Um, it is kind of stupid to use the brute force. It's also a good thing we took the print statement out or we'd have an awful lot of numbers coming up the screen. Because Python's really fast, it's no big deal for it to add a million numbers and come up with the answer. But we can also see a pattern here. If we were Gauss, we wouldn't actually need to do this by brute force. We could do it in a more um, elegant manner. But Python will do it for us.